In this lesson, we're going to take a look at shape optimization versus generative design. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to identify a topology optimized part and identify a generative designed part. Fusion 360 has a lot to offer in terms of optimizing your designs. We have a shape optimization simulation study and we have generative design built into Fusion 360. I want to take a second to make sure we understand the differences between topology optimization, which is our shape optimization simulation study, and generative design. As we look at these two designs on the screen, the one on the right hand side is our generatively created design based on our criteria. The one on the left is the mesh that was generated by our shape optimization simulation study. The same criteria was used for both of them, giving them a fixed plate against a wall and applying a load to the four bosses. The big difference we have in the outcome is based on the rules that are used to generate these bodies. The shape optimization or topology optimization that we see in the mesh body was done based on load paths. So it takes a fixed plate, assuming the entire plate is fixed and preserved, and then it applies a load to it. Now it doesn't take into account the stress or strain in the actual structure that we're talking about. It's only really looking at where the load wants to go between our fixed constraint and our loads. It takes those into account and it starts to build this mesh. So we're starting from this block shape. We're telling it where we want to preserve, in this case, preserve the back plate and where we need to go. When we have a generative study, we're really looking at it a little bit differently. We still have our fixed constraint in our loads on our bosses, and we have our preserved regions very similar to what we have inside of our shape optimization. However, the difference is that as it starts to build this design out, it is actually looking at the stress distribution. So it starts with the big block, similar to what we have for our topology optimization mesh body. However, each time it goes through an iteration, it's taking a look at areas where the stress is high and the stress is low. If the stress is low, it removes material. If it's high, it adds material. And it keeps doing this until it converges or comes close to converging on whatever our criteria is. So for example, our objectives were very similar in both of these, minimize mass. However, we have minimized mass with a target factor of safety in generative design. When we're using shape optimization, we have a target mass of 30% of the original body we're dealing with, this original bounding box. So as we set up both of these designs, we need to keep in mind the fact that a shape optimization really is looking for an original body as its bounding box, while generative design is really looking for us to tell it where we want to preserve our geometry, in this case, the mounting points, and where it cannot go. It wants to know where it has to avoid, and it'll build it out based on the stress distribution throughout the body. So while these two have similar applications and the terms get mixed and matched between them, there is a great difference in the output between these. When you have a generative design output, you can simply send that right to a 3D printer or you can begin to manufacture it based on whichever manufacturing methods you chose. However, a shape optimization or topology optimization mesh is really a reference. You could theoretically send that to a 3D printer, but we can see that it doesn't really preserve the bosses in the same manner as it does the BREP geometry that we have in our generative design. So there will be more post-processing or a complete remodel based on the results of our topology or shape optimization. These are definitely both handy tools depending on what you're designing. If I'm going to use shape optimization, I typically use it for something like linkage or some sort of mechanical structure where I know what the outside shape looks like, but I don't know where I can remove material on the inside. On the generative design, it's great to have that freedom of design and simply tell it what it needs to hold up to in the real world, what kinds of stresses and strains are going to be applied, and where it has to avoid or where it can't go. So where do you take both of these designs? Well, either of these designs could be applicable for the end result. Again, we do have post-processing that has to happen on the topology optimized design on the left-hand side, simply because that mesh is unusable as is. We could go back to the original body that was used and begin designing it based on the information that we gathered, or we could work with mesh manipulation and begin to smooth out that mesh and get to a little bit closer place where we're happy with the results. 
For more information on either of these techniques, make sure you check out the Autodesk resources as well as courses that are created around these technologies to help you better understand how they can be used in your everyday designs.